<laughs> Good evening. Hey, Jill. <laughs> Our boss is wearing the helmet. That is wonderful. Blah. That's a sound you don't hear every day. You know, oh hey, look, it's on the TV. That actually reminds me of the Grey Fox helmet, now that I think about it. Not so much the earmuff part right here, but like, this bit. If that was a glowing red eye, that would be a dead ringer. That's a sound you don't hear every day. Boss, what are you doing with that helmet? I was just about to ask you where it came from. A white knight came yesterday. She left and, well, forgot to take it with her. Well, oh. Excuse me. I figured she'd eventually come looking for it, so I left it under the counter... Wait. Do you regularly put things on without asking who they belong to first? That's a good point. Maybe, maybe it was, like, trapped or something. I don't plan and evaluate every move, Jill. I just act. I respect that. Anyway, as your boss, I'm taking this helmet until the client comes for it. You sound happy. Well, this helmet is comfortable, and cool, and comfortable, and cool, and really, really cool. Hello. It's strange that you're late, Gil. Yeah, the traffic was... Gruh. Don't run, you have work to do. <laughs> That's hilarious. I am not going back to Hong... To Hong Kong? Why would... Okay. Hong Kong? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ch chief Sorry, I thought you were someone else. Apparently. I'll leave the rest up to you. I'll detonate the Pluto warhead some... I'm sorry, what? The what? Where now? Again, that's what I'm saying. Nothing. Never mind. She seems happy. She's been tense these past couple of days, so... If she's somehow relaxed now, I'm good. Are you all set? Yep. Alright. Alright, so I don't really have a system for how I'm gonna, like, change the songs. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I'm not taking off Every Day is Night because that one's my favorite. So... Uh, let's see here. I'm just trying. I'm gonna try and remember like other ones that I haven't thrown up yet. Like I don't think I used March of the White Knights yet. Or I don't think I used that one yet. Um, a Renee. And, uh, Metropolis? <clears throat> Alright, cool. Time to mix drinks and change lives. I guess that's something she says every time. Alright. That's a cool catchphrase. Hey, Brat, you're in luck. I decided to bless this place again. Oh boy. Mr. Donovan. Welcome back. Luck, he says. Yeah, right? Oh, Mr. Donovan, welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? What do you think I want, kid? The usual. Gee, I wonder what he means. If I remember correctly, that would be a beer. Double-sized, too, so... Two of those... Four of these, two of these, four Flannergide, and eight Carmotrines. I don't know why I was failing so hard at that, but success! Beer. Here you go. Yes, now that's what I call service. 
I imagine this dude speaking with like uh, the voice of maybe this is just me being typecasty and silly, but the voice of Jonah Jameson from the original Spider-Man trilogy. Maybe it's just me because they both run news things and my lack of imagination, but that's the voice I put him with. What brings you here today, Mr. Donovan? Today we were supposed to hand the interns an article topic. Oh boy, excitement. All those crazy hooligans came flocking to me like the first high schooler with a car. I couldn't deal with it, so I switched places with some poor sap. He was supposed to be doing an interview today, but screw that. <laughs> And thanks to all of that, I found myself here blessing your bar with my presence. You were here yesterday, too. How did that come about? Yeah, blessing, huh? There's this gal that's performing at a concert later tonight. I wonder if that's the meeky lady that we read about. Yesterday I was tuning the details of the interview I'd have with her today. And like I said, I'd rather work here than deal with a pack of competitive hooligans. I see. How was the interview? Easy enough, the fact that the... the, the dude, why? Some decorum, please. We've come a long way in the... So now I'm led to believe that he's talking about a android robot person? Which makes his previous comment a little weirder? She was a Lilum then? Yeah, one of those fancy King Class CH1A models. So yeah, the robot apparently. Or android or what Okay, it's probably not as weird in the society in which this game is taking place. But it doesn't make me think that these comments are less weird as an onlooker. Hmm, hey you, guy with the John face. Huh? Me? What What is a John face? Yeah, you. Do I know you? I don't think so, sir. No, no, I'm pretty sure I know you. Wait, wait, wait. It was the Hong Kong riots ten years ago, right? I, I've never been to Hong Kong. And I certainly didn't defect from any anti-riot force after sealing supplies. That is an oddly specific denial, Gillian. Really? That's a bummer. You look like a guy who owes me a drink. You were in those riots, Mr. Donovan? Do I look like some kind of anarchist hippie to you? No. Mmm. I love the saxophone part so much. Ten years ago, I tried to start a silicone business. Oh boy. So I was in Hong Kong talking with some investors when those darned riots broke out. Seriously though, did they really think that the laws they were trying to pass would not backfire? They were openly trying to segregate people with augmentations. No matter how many, they have different capabilities you put in between, it's still segregation. And once people start crying, segregation, like that, you're doomed. He's got a point. This is the PR century. If you're gonna do that, disguise it a bit. That's a, uh... A very laconic way of summarizing the incident. Laconic is such a nice word that I wish people used more. I mean, there was a political agenda revolving around cheap labor, and the plan reached such a developed stage because the media was instilling fear in the public. The general fear that augmented people would become power-hungry maniacs was the key factor in the plans. And everything is mostly aftermath of the previous protests where on second thought, maybe it's better to be laconic. Trying to get the full picture might take you back beyond the Industrial Revolution. Hmm. I wonder if it means the same thing to me as it does to her, the term Industrial Revolution. Or if, you know, the society had one with, like, robots and computers and whatnot, as opposed to, like, you know, the... Yeah, you get my point. All of that happened when I got out of high school. I remember I had to turn down a scholarship in Hong Kong because of that. Heh, <laughs> scholarship. That's no mean feat, Brett. Well, I guess even without the scholarship, I would've, there would've been the language barrier. 
I remember I was kind of excited back then because I was really into this one Chinese idol band. Oh god. It's one of those things I'd rather not remember much of. Okay, well, I will do my best not to remind you. You'd be surprised at how easy Chinese can be. So you know how to speak Chinese? The only translator I had available was some pizza-faced pencil neck. And I wasn't going to allow myself to be seen with that. Harsh. I mean, if he gets the job done, he gets the job done. If someone like me can learn Chinese in two weeks, well, I'm guessing a scholarship student might have a chance. Why do I feel like he suddenly challenged me to finally learn Chinese? Chinese? Wait, when you say Chinese, do you mean Mandarin or Cantonese? Tangerine and Canto what? When people... No, excuse me. Say Chinese, they're usually referring to the written word, not the spoken one. It's important to clarify because there are a lot of dialects in the Chinese language. In Hong Kong, lots of people speak Cantonese, so just saying Chinese won't do. You might have learned Cantonese because you were only going to Hong Kong. Or you might have learned Mandarin because it was the one spoken by the majority elsewhere. I went to Hong Kong and managed to seal a deal. I have no idea about anything else. Alright. Anyways, surely a student with a scholarship can serve me a Mars Blast too, right? <laughs> sure, right on it. A Mars Blast, huh? Alright, well, I will give him one that is out of this world. One of these is enough to leave your face red like the actual planet. Oh man. Alright, we need six Bronson extracts here. Six. One. One, two, three, four. One, two. All blended. Alright, so we gotta let it go for a little while. Ta da! Alright, I guess I'll believe your story. Right. Hey kid, I got wasted yesterday, so there's a certain protocol here. Would you mind telling me if I said anything that someone could use against me in the court of law? Oh man. I don't think he did, but that would be something, wouldn't it? Unless complaining about your investors could be used as an investors as an excuse me. Unless complaining about your investors can be used as a legal weapon, I don't think so. Oh good. Screw those guys. What did I tell you? How they wanted unreasonable stuff and how they feel like they have more power than you do and all that? Oh yeah, I recall something like that. But then again, it seems to be something I say a lot when I'm drunk. Huh. People do tend to fall back on the same old things to complain about that and racial racial slurs and wow I cannot who's the one who's had a drink so far geez that and racial slurs in German racial slurs in what one second please there are people worse than your investors oh do tell who your clients. Like, you know? Excuse me? Your readers. If you think the clients are always right, then you're wrong. Unless I'm the client, that is. You know, he's got a point. There are probably people who are just a bunch of whiny little tools in his little audience there. We live in an era where PR is the first and only word in anything. You can sell the worst of stuff and people will buy it if you're the apple of their eyes. That is a cool expression, and I wish more people said that, too. I like that. Although, I never have a reason to say it, but I wish I just heard more people say it. But make one mistake and it's over for you. It's game over, man. You're suddenly a criminal to them. No chance of appeal. Gods forbid if they ever catch you. Ah, if they ever catch something you said out of context. You know, he's just making a lot of good points. People these days are really fickle. A month ago, we had to clarify that we were talking about the animal in an article, Cougars in a Nearby Forest. 
What? All because we got a pack of 40-year-old divorced soccer moms crying about it. <laughs> Hurt feelings. Oh man, that is wonderful. They were having picnic parties in the same forest that, and thought we were writing about them? You know, couldn't they have at least read the article? God, I hope at least one of them gets eaten by their namesake. Yeah? <laughs> That's yeah, it's funny when someone else hears it, but when I smell rosy perfume, it still makes my blood boil. <laughs> Nowadays, no one can take a joke. They're always out for blood. Yeah. You can't win. You will always offend somebody. So, you know, just make sure you offend the people that you rather offend rather than trying not to offend people and offending people you wouldn't want to. And while taking some of it, and while some take it graciously, many just love feeling insulted. Yeah? They relish the thought of ganging up against something. Outrage culture is ridiculous. And those hypersensitive tools are your clients. They're the ones you have to target. Oh yeah, that sucks. I run a newspaper. The whole point is to present news in the most neutral way possible. Being offended by a newspaper is like being angry at the mirror. Well, not necessarily, but similar concept. I mean, it's not like he's totally wrong, but hearing it from him is kind of grating. Ah, oh, look at the time. I need to get back to work soon. Really? I just finished an interview, and it needs to be posted as soon as possible. The fact that we're posting it after the chick finished her concert is enough of a problem already. Something delayed the interview? The interview was supposed to la happen last Friday. One of the interns, this meek little girl, I wonder if it's the intern we talked to yesterday, was supposed to do it, but for some reason she just didn't. I spent two days negotiating something else instead. Negotiating? Did you have to pay or something? Basically. Or basically, when the concert, when the encore concert happens, I need to plaster that chick's face all over the front page. I see. Okay then, one last drink before I leave. Give me something bitter to wake me up. Alright, Sunshine Cloud, two Adelhide, and two Bronson Extract with optional Carmotrine. Or, yeah, however you say it. That's a simple one. And he doesn't want to be super drunk, so we're just gonna... Oh, I done messed up, I done messed up. Reset. Okay. I caught my mistake before, thankfully. I forgot to put the ice on. Now I just have to blend it. I I wonder if that means I don't have to pay the like mistake thing and I could get the perfect whatever here. Yeah, this works just fine. Man, that gal's producer was angry. Trying to negotiate with him was a hassle. I've had less problems dealing with SoCal Justice Warriors. <laughs> That's funny. Who? SoCal Justice Warriors? That mafia vigilante group that runs around solving crimes in swimsuits? Okay. Oh yeah, those artificially blonde, artificially tanned folks with big blunt objects. Yeah, excuse me? They're an interesting group, you know. They only accept people born or raised in South California and go through rigorous training on a daily basis. They have to. No normal person can run around in swimsuits in this cold weather. This is a weird group of people. They have an interesting view on the world and how it works, but they're pretty sensitive too. Too many outlets have insulted them in the past, and they're so they're trigger happy against defamation. I've had a dozen guys in Speedos talking to me about some news while flaunting their bags of batteries? Is that a euphemism? Oh, no, no, that's like a threat. And they were still more polite than that producer guy. Think about it, watching... Ugh, gross. I'm pretty sure there's... <laughs> 
a banana hammock synth. Oh god. Well, I'm out. Thank you, please come again. Yeah, yeah. That was, um, tiring. Hey, Jill, I think I have a problem. D d you got it stuck, didn't you? Yep, I can't take the helmet off. <laughs> I just imagine the most exaggerated of laughs coming from out of off screen somewhere. Yeah, yeah, very funny. Did you check the internet for help? How to take off a Valkyrie type white knight helmet is not precisely a common query, you know? I could break it, but I don't want to damage the client's proper. Of what? Did you run out of air? I just realized you served a Valkyrie in Valhalla. <laughs> Did I make a joke about that? Because if otherwise, that is hilarious though. <laughs> I hope I made a joke about that. <laughs> Gillian again. <laughs> don't scare me like that. I don't think you can run out of air with this helmet. What are you gonna do? I know someone that might help me. I'll give her a call. Let's see, where was her number? Oh, here it is. Hey, Iris, I need some unclogging advice. Iris. I've heard Chief call her a couple times. Maybe she's a friend? More importantly, will Chief be fine? She will. Even if there's no god or Buddha, you can always trust the boss. Yeah, let's hope you're right. Hey, honey, can you see me? Hello, Dorothy. Yeah, I can see you. Why? Oh, she's got some neat eyes. 